Hi there folks, welcome back. If you've uh, watched part one, uh, if you've landed here, this is the second part of my uh, tutorial video for Arabesque by Johann Frederick Bergmuller. Now, if you haven't seen the first part, probably have a look at that first because that will guide you through how to uh, play the first part of the piece. Let's now take a look at the middle section. The middle section is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars long, a fairly standard length for a section of music. This is the middle section. <laughs> which leads into... Okay, so how does that bit work? Well, at the beginning, the melody's gone like this. It's very much melody and accompaniment. The middle section, the hands kind of reverse rolls, and this is a kind of a style of, um, well, certainly, I suppose, Baroque and, and classical music, where if one hand was playing the melody, the other hand would play the accompaniment, and if the other hand played uh, uh, an accompaniment, the other hand would swap round. In this case, we, we do hear a little bit more of the, um, the minor-ness, I suppose you might call it, of the A minor key. Notice how when we finished, we're here in uh, uh, the second time bar, and then what we then have to do is move our third finger to the G sharp just below middle C. And then we have the same sort of riff, if we can call it that, but we do it on the left hand down here. G sharp, and don't forget, the sharp applies to all the Gs in the bar. Like that, that's your first bar, that middle section. Then what happens is you have to move your hand to the A minor chord position. And that little phrase you actually played earlier in the song in your right hand. Just simply then go back down, and then up again to repeat. So that's the first four bars of that middle section. It goes a little bit like this. Notice it's exactly the same, uh, almost, as the, as the beginning in the way it's articulated. Smooth, off, smooth, off, smooth, off, smooth, off. Now, the next bar, you keep your hand where it is, put your third finger on the... Uh, C sharp, and then look at that bar. There's then a treble clef coming in on the lower state. Now this is something I, I always make a really strong point of when this comes up in any piece of music. And what you have to remember here is, is that we're not needing to play this with the right hand. All it simply means is on the left hand lines the notes are written in treble clef. The treble clef is not the right hand. Most of you may have been told that when you've had piano lessons. Yes, most of the time the treble clef is the right hand, but in this case we're using the treble notation system for the left hand. Why do we do that? Well, the thing is if you want these higher notes on the bass stave, you have to go and put lots of extra ledger lines in, those little lines that extend the save. In this case, we don't need to do that. So what we do is we, we, we finish on here, and then just read the next note, bar 17 on this copy of the score, and it says 5 on D just above the middle C. And so that's where your hand goes. And then you walk down like this. 1 on F, let's move my hand out of the way, 1, 2, 3, 2 on the uh, D sharp, thumb on the E, and walk down to B, and then your hand will just simply land at the start of the end part, which is there. Okay, let's have a look at that again. Here's the whole of the middle section, the eight bars beginning just after the second time box. Repeat. Tuck your thumb to F, down, down, two on the D sharp, down, and finish on the chord. There you go, that's the middle section. The right hand has a fairly simple job. Octave jump at the end, A, A, two on E, and then walk down the scale, remembering to cross over the third finger to C, G sharp, your little finger is on E, and then your hands are then set up 
for the next main theme repeat. That's really clever, isn't it? Very important, the fingering, though. Let me take you through that last little section where the hands walk down together. Here it is together in slow motion. Now, how does that bit work? Let's go from bar 17. Here we go. Walking up the road. And then what you do is just walk down the fingers as they are, two and four, um, then you've got to tuck your thumb under to F, third finger on D, so that's the first bit to get right, okay? So, thumb and little finger, one and five, two and four, and then sling your thumb under, like that, to F, the third finger keeps going, and then up you go. Okay, so let's try that again. Tuck, cross, two on D sharp. I made a little mistake here, I've just noticed. Bad me. <laughs> uh, obviously I didn't lead into it, but A, A, two will be on the E, and then your three will be on the F. So then I walk down, twos, tucking under, cross over, and then two on that D sharp, two on the G sharp, and then that's the end. Now there's a little instruction there on that run. It says dim y poco ral, which is diminuendo y poco ral andando, which is the best Italian accent I can do. And that just literally means diminish away and slow down a little. So drop the volume, drop the tempo. handily are the opening four bars. Now, this is the last part of this section. Now, I, I know I sort of said this was the middle part, but we, we can't really sort of finish the middle unless we, we finish this bit. So, uh, the next chord after that is this chord, A, D, E. Now that's called a suspended chord, it's A minor suspended fourth to give it its proper name. And what that simply means is the fourth note of the A minor scale, which is D, is suspended above the C, which is the, the normal note. So we play those two, da, 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 and then bring the C in, da, da, back again it goes, ba, ba, and then we have another first time box. Now that then links back to the repeat marks at the beginning of the middle section. So that's where you're going to go back to. Let me just show you that last little section again. The final eight bars of the middle. Going up. Now, the beauty of this bit is the coordination is the same. It's the same rhythms, the same almost the same um, sort of pattern, if you like, to your brain. The only difference is you're playing some different keys. We first of all have this suspended chord, and instead of going to E, you have to come down to B. Okay? Start with your second finger. That'll give you enough fingers to get up to E. So. Okay? And then what happens is you've got to go to here. So it's this chord, suspended A minor, A minor suspended fourth, B finger two. And it's the same pattern as the first section. A minor, back to the suspended. Okay, now what then happens is we go back to the middle. off there and then we're going to have a small third part tutorial just to have a look at the end. So that's the middle part of Bergmuller's Arabesque. The middle of the song is strictly speaking eight bars and then we have another eight bars which is the main theme repeated with a little variation. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the middle section of Bergmuller's Arabesque from the 25 Progressive Studies. 
Don't forget, if you haven't got this piece, it's worth buying the book. Bergmuller's 25 Progressive Studies, Opus 100. Uh, it's got some fantastic pieces in it, and they'll really do some great things for your piano playing. If you haven't seen the first part, watch the first part of this tutorial video where I go through some of the basics of the song and the first part of this wonderful piece of music. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe and share with your friends. And if you want to, please posit, uh, comment positively on this video. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you soon for some more hints and tips on uh, Keyboard Skills Pro.